G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today I've got a really quick demo just to show you a neat little trick that might help you in setting up your shared parameters file in Revit, um, a little trick that most people aren't aware of, which is how you can hide shared parameters using Revit. So we're just gonna switch over to presentation mode and we're just gonna get started. So hiding shared parameters, specifically shared parameters. So I'd like to thank um, Charbel for sort of pushing me back into action on this topic because someone actually requested this about five months ago and I'll be honest, I did forget to get back to it. Um, so thank you for sort of lighting the fire um, under my butt. <laughs> anyway, uh, a quick demo. So how to edit a shared parameter file using Excel. Now, some people might have seen me in the past say this is an absolute no-no. You don't do this. Here's the one time where I'll give you a leeway into doing it. But you have to be really careful when you edit a shared parameter file, because as you're gonna see, it's a very heavily structured file, and one little change to the structure can stop the whole thing from working. So it's very unforgiving. We're also just gonna to touch on why you might hide shared parameters in the first place, because it's a very specific use case. Um, so hidden parameters, what are they? Well, they're parameters that are in a shared parameter file, so they can't be a project parameter or a family parameter, they have to be shared. Um, they're typically visible in schedules, in programs like Dynamo that can see the data or the back end of Revit, and also in the family editor outside the project environment. However, most importantly, they're invisible in the project in an element's properties at a type or an instance level. So they really clean up the interface when a user is selecting and working with these elements at the front end. The main reason you might want to do this is if you're using some common calculation parameters. So these are typically parameters that are driven by formulas that enable a family to meet certain criteria, shapes, sizes, or conditions. And usually the user has very little need to see this parameter or interact with it in any way, but maybe it's gonna to help to hide the parameter or have it as a shared parameter for scheduling or data access purposes. So in this case, we can use a hidden parameter to get around this. We're gonna be using Revit 2020 and just build 2.2.1 at the moment for anyone trying to follow along. I'm gonna be using my shared parameter file which can be found on my BIMGuru online store um, where you can purchase it if you, if you wish to have a shared parameter file. But you can use any shared parameter file here. So I'm in Revit, I'm gonna make a new family. I'm gonna go new family and I'm just gonna make a generic model, everyone's favorite category. Now at the moment I just need to connect to a shared parameters file. So I'm gonna go shared parameters and I'm just gonna browse to my shared parameters file. I've made a copy, which I'm gonna work in pretty soon. But at the moment, my shared parameters file is just broken up into groups, and then the groups contain various sets of shared parameters. Now I'm just gonna use a couple of the data parameters. In this case, I'm just gonna use a couple of the count fields. So I'm gonna make one visible and one not visible. So if I go to my type properties of my family, I'm gonna add two parameters on an instance basis. Now I'm just gonna add Firstly, I'm just gonna add uh, one count parameter. This is just an integer parameter, nothing special about it. I'm gonna make it instance-based in this case. Uh, yeah, I'll make it instance-based. I'm gonna load this family. I'm just gonna put some geometry in it first as well. I'm gonna load this family and I'm just gonna place it. So when I select this family, I should expect to see all the standard parameters that come with it. And now I can also see this parameter because it's not hidden. So it's schedulable, but it's also visible by the user in this case as well. Now, what if I add another parameter that I wanna be hidden? Well, to do that, we have to go through a very specific workflow. So in this case, I've made a copy of my shared parameters file. Um, this is really important because if you work in the source file, if you make one mistake, you've lost your original working shared parameters file. Now, if I open a shared parameters file, it's a very complex file in structure, or at least it looks to be fairly complex. Once you understand that it's not too hard, um, but in this case, typically it begins with a couple of header lines that literally say, do not edit manually. So you're already being told by Autodesk, you know, turn back. Um, so we do have to be careful. That the first section of a shared parameters file contains all the groups and their identification number, as well as their name. And then later on, each row is essentially each parameter with its GUID or its general user ID number. Um, and it's also got the name of the parameter. Um, in this case, the type of parameter storage data, such as length, and then also, uh, in this case, the group that belongs to. So for example, group 12 is my windows dimension group, and this is my glazing thickness parameter. So you can see that it associates it to the group. And then from there, we have a few values with ones and zeros. Now it gets very hard to see what column everything belongs to. Um, everything in a shared parameters file is separated by what we call tabs, so the tab key. 
This is like what we call our delimiter, which tells the computer when it interprets this file or passes it, um, that in this case, this is where a break in data occurs. And this is how the computer can understand the structure of a single file. This is a very common technique in, comp in computing. Um, so in this case, I might just open it in Notepad++ instead. Um, in this case, I'll go open. Um, Notepad++ is a much easier program to view files like this in. It's still a little bit messy on the back end, um, but you can at least see some of the stacking of data and you can see the rows that everything's occurring at. Um, but we're gonna be working with Excel instead. So in this case, I'm just gonna close these files in Notepad. I'm gonna go over to Excel and I'm gonna go and open uh, this file. Now this is usually where most people get a bit confused. Because by default in Excel, you can't see TXT files. So by default, it looks for Excel files. So I can't see this file. If I just change it to all files, I can see everything. In this case, I'm gonna open up the shared parameters copy. It's gonna prompt me to destructure the file or break it down using a delimited method. In this case, I'm just gonna go next with delimited and I'm gonna delimit using tabs. So notice that when I select tabs, it breaks it up by every tab. So every space or tab is generating a break in data and every new line is generating a new line so we end up with a table if we finish this now our shared parameters file is visible in excel i'm just going to make these just a little bit wider i'll make them 15 and i'm just going to justify them left so we can see that we still get our list of groups but then we also have these columns and now we can actually really see what's happening in these columns now we can really actually see how they're organized we just care about this visible column. So this is what, whether the parameter is visible or not. In this case, I can see that all of them are just set to one, which means true. So usually in computing language, one is true, zero is false, um, or open and close logic gates. Um, so what we're gonna do is just expand this column, which is all our parameter names. And I'm just gonna go and look for the parameter that I want to hide. So in this case, I know that the parameter I'm looking for is called bg underscore dat for data and then count two. So I'm gonna find next, and there's my parameter. So I can see I've got an integer parameter, um, I've got its GUID, and I know it belongs to group six. And then in this case, I wanna say that it's not visible, so I'm gonna make this zero. So now this parameter shouldn't be visible when I load it into the family. So what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm gonna save as to this PC. And in this case, I'm gonna resave it as a CSV file or a comma separated value file. So in this case, this is just giving me one step that I can use to generate the file back into a tab separated file. So if I go into Notepad++ and I open this CSV file, I've got everything, but the tabs are obviously now represented by commas. So I'm gonna copy one of these commas. Actually, no, I'm gonna, co I'm gonna copy a tab. So I'm gonna do a tab, copy the tab, get rid of it. Control H for find and replace. This also works in Notepad. And I'm just gonna paste that tab and I'm gonna replace all my commas with tabs. So I'm gonna do replace all. And now we should get a clean file that's originally back to its structure that we had before. So you can see we've had to be quite disciplined in how we work with this file just to make sure that we don't screw it up. Uh, but in this case, I'm just gonna go back to a TXT file and I'm just gonna resave over my copy. Yes, I'm gonna save over. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back into Revit I'm going to go to manage and I'm going to go to my shared parameters file and I'm going to browse to my copy that's been updated. I'm going to okay that. Now I'm going to go into uh, the, oh, actually I'm going to go back in my family. I'll just make sure, I think this should now be pointing to the copy in all fronts. Yep, so I'm just pointing to the copy now. Now I'm going to go and add that count to parameter instead. So I'm going to go data and I'm going to add count two, which should now be hidden. I'm gonna make it instance-based, and I believe if it's instance-based, it should still be hidden. So if I load this back in, and I overwrite my family, and I go down, notice I can only see count one. I can't see count two, but the family does have count two. It is there, it's just behind the scenes. So I can actually go and create a, a generic model schedule. If I go to view schedules, and I make a generic model schedule, it should be visible as a field that I can still schedule. So there it is. Um, I just can't see it, it's just not visible. So this could be driven by a formula and it would be fine. So I can actually go and modify values anyway. So I can make these one and two. I can go back and I can see that I've modified the value, sorry, of the family and the project. 
but I can't see it. And I believe I should also be able to see this parameter in Dynamo. So I should be able to see this as an element parameter um, that's still accessible. So it's just a way to sort of bury some of the, the data that clutters up the, uh, the user experience. Uh, but you do have to be very careful when you do this. Um, I'll just get a select model element. Because obviously, like, I've just made a very intentional decision for that parameter to from now on be hidden because that's part of the parameter's definition. It's not something you can just toggle on and off at will. So you really should only use it for parameters you're always going to want to be hidden. Um, in this case, I'm just going to get an element parameters node and I'm just going to have a look for that parameter in the data. And there it is, bg.count2. So I can see this in Dynamo as well. It's just at the surface level. So hopefully this gives you like a little idea of what something you might be able to implement into your company data structure. Um, but do be very careful with how you do this and make sure that if you do make this change to your file, you make a backup and you do this before you roll out your data structure across your company. Because you can't have this parameter hidden and not hidden in separate files. It will just confuse your users. So you do need to be careful how this is set up. But essentially that's it. Um, so hopefully that was useful. Um, this presentation will be on GitHub. And if you are interested in the shared parameters file, it is available on my BIM Guru online store. So thanks again um, for the request. And hopefully this helps people um, in better managing their shared parameters and their, their data in Revit. Um, so if you're not already following and subscribing, uh, feel free to do so. I make videos twice a week and aim to do so for a long time. And I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Uh, thanks. Take care. Bye.